Hey guys, what's up? David Fine here from Keys Moths. And why am I so excited? Well, it was just recently Moth Week. Uh, and while Ricky and I, my friend Ricky and I, were down in the Florida Keys, and we took advantage of the research permit I have for North Key Largo and Crocodile Lake National Wildlife Refuge, and we were able to go and look for moths. And we had a great night, dude. We found lots and lots and lots of moths and we've got plenty of videos out on those so you check those videos out to see all the moths we found it was a great night it was a great night moth week 2022 was a uh we one night we got there at 8 30 and we didn't go to sleep we were up until the sun came up exhausted the next day but boy it was one after another new species after new species so that's cool. And guys, today what we're going to do is we are going to show you some of the caterpillars we found because we're doing life cycle research and we're making videos on some of the life cycles of the moths of the Florida Keys because the Florida Keys has some really cool species. And we've got um, a website, it's keysmoths.com. And on that website, guys, we have photographed for you 600 species of moths that we found and identified in the Florida Keys so far. So guys, check out the website. It's links in our description. And one of the gaps are, when, when, when I think of my website and I think of the research that we're doing, most of the, the moths in the website don't have larval photographs. And so that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to catch up and provide larval photographs and videos for the different species of moths. But 600 species is a lot. And in fact, the, the moths of the Florida Keys are so poorly understood that we, there's actually probably half of them don't even, we don't even know what the host plants are. So when we find caterpillars in the wild, in the Florida Keys, it's a very important thing to actually document the life cycle, document what species of plant the caterpillar was feeding on and then link it to the adult that emerges. You take the caterpillar, you raise it in a container like this on that plant, and you, when it emerges, then you document the entire life cycle with ph photography and videography. And that way, we have we can build on the scientific knowledge of the species of moths that live in the Florida Keys. So this type of thing excites me. In fact, right here, this one on the bottom, this caterpillar is something that is, I have no idea what it is. So can't wait until that thing makes its chrysalis and emerges, that's another video. Today guys, we're actually gonna show you uh, what's in this container right here. In fact, I've got several things happening here. I've got some chrysalises, I've got Sphinx caterpillar here, I've got mystery caterpillar here. But what I'm gonna do today guys, we are going to show you one of, one of the a really cool caterpillar it's an arctia tiger moth um it's halicidota syncopes at least i think it's syncopes the caterpillars are so cool because the caterpillars have this weird little um these these hairs that come off uh, of near the head and it kind of looks like some indian headdress or native american head headdress They've got these hairs that come out near the near where the head capsule is, and it's a big fluffy caterpillar, and it almost looks like some kind of Native American headdress. So um, I'm gonna go in here. I'm gonna pull out this little stem here, and I'm actually just gonna put it on top of this. And now I'm gonna show you what is going on in this container. Let me come get my my camera and I'm gonna show you guys what's up. All right, now, I'm gonna try and do this in the best way possible so you guys have the best lighting. Guys, check out, check out this caterpillar right here. Now I've got several of them. We found several of them. This one here, is a fully grown Halicidota syncopes tussock moth caterpillar. And when I said the Native American headdress, look at these big wispy little white hairs that it has coming off of the thorax near the head. 
And when they're at rest, this guy's kind of crawling around right now. It actually looks pretty intimidating. Um, how cool of a caterpillar is that, guys? These guys are actually feeding on uh, Florida Trema. And isn't he cute? Isn't he cute? I love these guys. I, I, I can't wait to show you the rest of the life cycle. Uh, these little hairs on this species, let me see if they sting. No, they're kind of soft and fluffy right now. But the hairs on this species, on the caterpillar, uh, are soft and fluffy. But somehow, when this caterpillar makes its cocoon, the hairs on the cocoon, like they, it actually, they're covered with all these little hairs. And they've got all of these little barbs in on the hairs. And they actually, if you touch the cocoon with your fingers... It, the barbs of these hairs actually stick in your skin and they're very, very irritating and annoying. And so I, I'm not like a masochist or anything, but it is, it is a cool, cool life cycle. And I'll show you that once this dude finally makes its cocoon. But I love watching them just crawl around. Isn't it? They're, they're cool guys. They're the best. I love my hobby. You can see the the segments of the body. Each segment of the body has its own set of hairs that come off. And that's not his host plant. Guys, that's his host plant. They're, they're chowing down. I'm actually raising two different species in this one container just because I didn't have any more containers to use. But this is a fully grown caterpillar. I would say in the next day or two, this one will make its cocoon and then it's chrysalis inside the cocoon. And then I will show you the adult when it emerges. But as cool as he is, I'll show you what the younger caterpillars look like right here. This one here, or these two, there's actually two of them. These are in fourth instar. So this, these two here are younger caterpillars, probably a different brood from a different adult uh, mother. And they lack that big black stripe. You know, this guy's got the big black stripe down, his, down the center of the body. And the, the hairs on the side are a little bit more cream colored. These guys here have yellow hairs, no black stripe, a little bit smaller. Um, but they're hungry because this is all of the Florida Trema leaf that I have left. And these guys are actually pretty common in the Florida Keys. Um, there is another species of Halicidota. It's Halicidota tessellaris. It has a much more wide range and lives throughout the Carolinas and so on. Uh, and I can't wait to show you the rest of this life cycle. So, guys, uh, if you like the video and you are into raising moths... Uh, give me a holler, give me a thumbs up. That really helps out our channel, supports our channel. If you just hit the like button on the video and give me a comment, you know, give me a comment what you think about how these caterpillars look. Aren't they cute? Comment, just say, just comment cute because they are super cute. I love raising our tea mods and they are super fun. So uh, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already. Don't forget to check out our website, keysmods.com. And if you have any questions at all, please let me know and I'll be happy to answer them for you. Uh, guys, take care. Hope to see you out in the field someday. Until next time, let's get out there and enjoy some big, fuzzy, fuzzy caterpillars. Take care, guys. Mm -hmm.